Number one, Florida cops arrest legally blind man. In a recent incident in Florida, a visually impaired man found himself in a truly terrifying situation when he was mistaken for carrying a firearm and subsequently placed under cuffs. The event unfolded on October 31st, 2022 in Lake City, west of Jacksonville, on a foggy and overcast morning when drivers were using their headlights. The officer stopped a man named James Hodges, who was returning from jury duty after observing him enter a crosswalk against a traffic control signal. It's a navigational aid. What's the problem? You a tyrant? Yeah, I am, actually. What's your name and date of birth? According to the arrest report, Hodges appeared to have a silver chrome pistol with a white grip in his back right pocket. However, upon closer inspection, the object turned out to be his folded up navigational aid, which he used as a cane. The body camera footage captured the encounter as one officer, identified as Deputy Jamie Goad, approached Hodges and started interrogating him about the item in his pocket. Hodges explained that it was his navigational aid, but the officer expressed suspicion and was insistent on verifying that it wasn't a firearm. I can't see it. You don't have to be a dick to me. Hodges questioned the reason for the stop and in response. It's my job. Am I detained? Yeah, you are. What's your name and date of birth? Deputy Goad escalated the situation, accusing him of being armed and making threats of arrest. Hodges asked to talk to the officer's supervisor, who was also present at the scene. Sergeant Randy Harrison joined the conversation and instead of listening to Hodges' concerns, backed up his subordinate, saying that the navigational stick could very easily be confused for a weapon. Sir, and her suspicion was that you were armed, okay? And she's asking you for your ID. He continued to argue with Hodges, saying that Deputy Goad's suspicion warrants that Hodges provide her with his ID and failure to do so would result in him getting detained. The encounter took a disturbing turn when both officers decided to handcuff and arrest Hodges, despite confirming at the start of the whole interaction that Hodges was not carrying any sort of dangerous weapon. While he was getting cuffed, Hodges asked for both officers' names and badge numbers, leading to additional unwarranted charges. I want your names and badge numbers. 1257 on Nick 65427. All right, Mr. Hodges, was that that hard? It's gonna be. I want your name and your badge number. No, I'll put him in jail for resisting. Okay. All right, let's go. Following an investigation into the incident, the Columbia County Sheriff's Office determined that the officers had committed policy violations. Sergeant Harrison faced a demotion and a suspension without pay for seven days, while Deputy Goad was also suspended without pay for two days. Both officers will undergo remedial training on civil rights. Sheriff Mark Hunter said that the officer's actions were not driven by ill intent, but rather by frustration and a failure to rely on their training. As Sheriff, I take full responsibility for this event and want to extend my sincere apologies to Mr. Hodges for the actions of my deputies. I do not feel these deputies' actions were guided by ill intent, but rather by frustration and failure to rely on their training. Nevertheless, he emphasized that such conduct is unacceptable and steps will be taken to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. James Hodge's partner, Rutha M. Jenkins, expressed her shock over the incident, noting that once the officers realized it was a cane, they should have understood that he was blind. The incident has left Hodges and his loved ones deeply disturbed, and they feel that the officers involved should have shown more care and consideration. Hodges spent more than 24 hours in jail for charges of resisting an officer. A month later, he filed a lawsuit against the sheriff's office for monetary damages. His attorney, John Phillips, said that his client was unlawfully arrested. This is an aid to a man who, who's legally blind. People normally think of federal civil rights cases or police cases in the form of shootings or death. And certainly, that's most of the cases we take. But we've got to stop the systemic abuses, said Phillips. To have accountability on the small cases stops issues in their tracks before they become big ones. The Columbia County Sheriff's Office, however, has not provided further comments on the matter at this time. If you think this encounter got out of hand, wait till you see our next story, where a black military veteran got profiled and then arrested for supposedly growing weed on a nearby property. Number two, cops arrest black military veteran for allegedly growing marijuana. In West Virginia, two deputies are facing a lawsuit over alleged violations of the civil rights of a black U.S. military veteran. The incident unfolded when the deputies arrested the man for simply refusing to provide his name. 
According to the complaint, the incident occurred on August 7, 2020, when three African-American residents of McDowell County were subjected to what they describe as unlawful and outrageous racial profiling, harassment, and retaliation solely based on their skin color. The deputies accused Donnie and Ventress Hairston of cultivating marijuana plants on a nearby property owned by someone else. Civil rights lawyer John H. Bryan, representing the plaintiffs, revealed the details of the incident. He stated that the officers harassed and intimidated the Hairston couple. These two homes is near that marijuana grow, so I'd just like to have your name. While they were sitting on their front porch, Jason Tart, the couple's landlord, joined them later and questioned the officer's authority, leading to retaliation and a false arrest. The officers allegedly prevented the Hairstons from witnessing and recording their misconduct, and they even physically forced them inside their homes. Body cam footage and commentary released by the attorney shed light on the events leading up to the arrest. In the footage, Ventress Hairston can be heard asking the officers for their names to feel more secure. I think it's important that I have your names. What do you mean, man? Um, a lot of crazy stuff going on. And so having your name makes me feel more secure. As I said, we came here June 28th. You know, we're actually new here. She expressed her disbelief that they were being asked about growing marijuana on their property. Despite the couple's denial, the officers reportedly continued to intimidate them. Are you growing marijuana? That is preposterous to me. <laughs> is just a question, my Yeah, well, I get that. And so then my only question to you is your names, just so it's okay in my own heart and mind. And when I say the season we're living in, you know the season yeah. we're living in. The deputies informed Tart that he is required by law to provide them with his name and date of birth. Well, sir, I'm, I'm going to need your name and date of birth. And I'm I have that. feel comfortable giving you my name and date of birth. Okay, well, this is a criminal investigation. You own these two homes, so by law, you do have to give me your name and date of birth, sir. If he gives you a reason, yes, you do. Reason for what? The Hairstons attempted to witness and record the incident, but the officers prevented them from doing so. You two go inside. Go inside. I'm afraid. Go inside. Go inside. No, go inside as of right now. Tell me why. Go inside. What are you doing? Step off the porch. Step off the porch. I'll step off. Go inside. What are you doing? This is unnecessary for you to be doing. Go inside. He's standing on his own porch. Go inside. Don't come in my hand. Go inside. Step back, go inside. Look, that, that's completely uncalled. The arrest occurred when Deputy Martin physically seized Jason Tart, took him to the driveway, and placed him in handcuffs. Walk to the vehicle. All. Well, walk to the Don't vehicle, sir. You're being recorded. Hands on me. I give sir, you no reason to touch me. I'm going to arrest you then. Place your hands behind your back. Uncalled for. Place your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Place your hands behind your back. Just listen. Just relax, okay? Listen. You, just you, relax. Place your hands okay. behind your back. Please place your hands behind your back. My hand is behind my... Well, place your it only takes you. one of you. Place your hands... Look, let him do it. All okay. right? Take your hands okay. off That's me. That's fine. Okay. Let him do it. Eventually, the obstruction of justice charge against Hart was dismissed by a McDowell County Magistrate Court. The lawsuit filed by lawyers representing Jason B. Tart and the husband and wife, Donnie and Ventress Hairston, claims that the officers racially profiled the veteran and suspected him or his family of growing cannabis on their property. The legal action was initiated on Tuesday, August 9, 2022, and it targeted deputies Dalton T. Martin and Jordan A. Horn, who are employed by the McDowell County Sheriff's Office. Additionally, the lawsuit also involves James Boomer Muncie and the McDowell County Commission. The plaintiffs argue that their first, fourth, and 14th Amendment rights were violated, and they are seeking a trial by jury. The lawsuit contends that the officers lacked probable cause to make their warrantless arrest and they allegedly engaged in malicious prosecution as a form of retaliation against protected free speech. Jason Tart and the Hairstons are seeking compensatory and punitive damages in the lawsuit. They also request that the defendants cover their attorney's fees and costs if they prevail in the case. If you want to watch more videos of cops acting like tyrants and abusing their power, then please subscribe to the channel.